guys, welcome to My Little Paintbrush. I'm so excited you're here to paint with me today. Even though we are not in the studio together, Miss Sarah's rules still apply. Remember that we are all unique, and that means that we are gonna be painting differently. That's what makes this world so beautiful. So, as you are painting, remember to be kind to yourself and enjoy the process. So let's get started. We're gonna start by painting this little spike here. I'm kind of excited about Twilight Sparkles Buddy. We're gonna start by using this flat here and I'm going to put it in my jar of water, give it a good rinse, loosen up the bris bristles, lightly tap our jar, or wipe it off on a napkin. We're gonna move to our first colors. So as you can see, we have yellow, lots of yellow, and some phthalo green. It's gonna look like really dark green to you. And we just wanna use a little bit of green, just a touch. So what I'm gonna do is pull my yellow away here, just a little bit, touch a tiny bit of green, and mix it in with our yellow until we love the color. The more yellow you add, the more limey your green will be. So you can kind of decide. We're gonna paint spikes, spikes. <laughs> First thing we're gonna do. And we wanna make sure that we like the green. He kind of has a limey green too on his spikes, so I'm gonna stay pretty light. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of white because whenever we paint with acrylics, white is our best friend. It brightens it up and helps it go on our canvas a little better. I like that color. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. We're gonna fill in our spikes. This is gonna warm us up, warm our muscles up as we go. And if you notice, I'm gonna try really hard not to pick up my brush as I go around my edges. As I do that, you'll get a smoother result. So I'm gonna just, just try and be as careful as I can to brush out any drips as we go. And you see, I'm gonna try and go all the way around his spikes without picking up my brush. And we're just gonna keep going all the way around this head. I'm trying not to paint inside Spike's head because we're gonna paint that purple, right? So we wanna make sure we have a clean canvas, but if you do end up painting inside his head, it's no big deal. Super easy to fix it. We can fix anything as we go. These little corners, as you go around spikes, little spikes, you wanna try and use the toe of your brush. The toe is the tippy point, just like your brush is standing on its toes. So as you get down to the smaller spikes, if you want, you can switch brushes, but I like to try and stay on my toe here. Okay. All right, so we have his spikes covered. You wanna just make sure that you love the color before we move on. So go back over it, start from your big one, and make sure you have enough covering those spikes. I like to put one more layer whenever I'm using yellow, just to make sure I like it, All right? And you can come back and add more later if you want to. You can always change it. All right, good job. So I'm gonna rinse my brush now. We want to make sure we keep our brushes really clean, right? As artists, our brushes are our best friends. So I'm going to clean my brush really well. Set it aside. I'm gonna switch now to a smaller flat brush because I wanna do his little spikes here. And we need a smaller brush to do that, okay? So I'm gonna rinse my brush again. We gotta loosen up the bristles and get it ready to go. Wipe it off of my jar. And let's get some more of this limey green. I'm gonna go over here to these little tiny spikes and make sure we fill those in too to be super careful. Sometimes we have to slow down when we're doing tiny areas and not go too fast. 
take our time. Make sure we get all those little humps. Remember, we're trying not to pick up our brush, right? This is good practice right here on these smaller ones to not pick up our brush. There we go. All right. I think we have our spikes on there. Remember, everyone's green is going to be a little different, right? Some of us are going to have it darker than others or lighter, and that's okay. So it makes it fun. Everyone's painting will be a little bit different. I'm going to go back over my spikes with a little more green. I want his spikes a little darker. So now that I've done one layer, I'm just going to go back over them, make sure it's nice and covered. You can see I got a little bit in my tail. Not a big deal, guys. That is okay. All right, so now that we are using this smaller brush still, right, we're going to add a little bit of yellow to that lime green and paint Spike's belly just a little bit though, because his belly is pretty yellow. I don't want it super green. Maybe you do, and that's awesome. You can do that. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of green in my yellow for his belly. We're just gonna fill that in with our smaller brush. Remember to slow down here because Spike is purple. We gotta leave room for that, so I'm just carefully filling up his belly area. Up and down, back and forth. If you notice, I'm holding my brush right here where that rubber part is. I'm pinching it there so I have a little more control over my movements. I'm gonna try and go all the way down that belly without picking up my brush. Up and down. There we go. Okay. I'm liking that color. Let's finish up his chin too. We're gonna come up here, fill in his chin, because Spike's chin and belly come all the way together here. Under his nose, we wanna make sure we leave room for his nose and we'll put his tooth in in a minute. But you can just paint right over that whole chin. Okay, we have one other thing to paint that is the same color as his belly. So we're gonna come right over here and paint his ear yellow. And he has lumps right here, right? Little humps. We wanna make sure we go all the way around those humps without picking our brush if we can. So it's nice and smooth. Trying not to pick up my brush again as I go around. Sometimes you need to add more paint to your brush because when you're using a canvas, you have lots of little white pockets that need to be filled. So make sure you're loading your brush with enough paint to fill those little pockets. Okay. If you want this to be a little more green than this, all you have to do is add more, right? Mine is pretty yellow because I like it to stand out away from my spikes. I like it to look a little different. So I have more yellow in my green. But if you want it more green, go for it. Okay. We have one more thing to paint that's yellow and that is the bottom of our tail. Let's go ahead and add that in too. We have to really use the toe of our brush in this area, right? Because it's a lot smaller. So I'm going to slow down and use the toe of my brush right there. Go. Okay. I like it. I'm going to rinse out my brush. Your water should be nice and green. Right, I'm gonna shake it out. Put that brush down because we're gonna switch brushes again. 
I'm going to switch over to my big flat and we're going to do our purple. Now our purple needs a lot of white. Remember to double check your brush. Make sure it's clean in your water. Do a gentle little tap, okay? We're gonna grab some white here and mix a lot of white with our purple. We need a lot of white because our purple's translucent. That means you can see right through it if we don't add enough white. And Spike is a very light purple, right? So I wanna make sure that I am using a lot of white. I'm just gonna double check my brush, make sure it's super clean. Because whenever we use a lighter color, if our brush is dirty, it's definitely gonna show up. Okay, I like that purple. I'm saving a little bit of my dark purple for my outlining that we'll do in a little bit. So once you get that light purple, we're gonna go ahead and start painting our Spike's head. And you see that I'm moving in a round motion like this because we want to keep those brush strokes going that direction. So as I paint, I'm gonna try and keep my brush moving around his head. Not up and down, right? Going back and forth and around Spike's head. Okay, try not to pick up my brush as I go around the eyeball. Spike's eye is white, so I'm gonna really slow down when I'm going around his eye. And you might notice if you don't have enough white that you can see through to your canvas, so you might wanna add a little more. You can always add more white. No big deal. Okay. And remember it's a print and not, or it's a painting, not a print, right? So we wanna make sure that we're not too hard on ourselves right here. It's okay if there's brush strokes, it's not a big deal. That's what makes it so fun as a painting is to have those brush strokes and I love having brush strokes in my work. So I'm gonna make sure to leave them if you see any white strokes in your painting, you can just leave those. That's what makes it so cool. All right, so we're gonna go around our head real careful here. Make sure we're going in a round circle motion as we go. Now we're coming up to our ear. So I'm gonna slow down. You notice I'm using the toe of my brush because I can't pick up my canvas right now to paint. If I had the ability to move my canvas, I would. So if you can move your canvas around as you go, that really makes it easier. You can do that. I like to move as I go to make sure I get those brush strokes just right. Okay, don't forget his nose. You notice I'm not going too close to my green. That's okay, because I'm gonna come back to it. We're gonna do outlining and some floating. So I'm not too worried about it. We'll come back to it. We're just getting our first layer on. Okay. Let's paint that nose. Remember the nose, we gotta use the toe of our brush. It's a little tricky. If you feel like you need to switch brushes, you can for this part. But it's a good challenge to try. And go all the way around without picking up the brush. There we go, we got his nose on there. Now we're gonna do his mouth. And not pick up our brush right there. Fabulous. Okay, now we're gonna paint this tail. Let's get our tail on there. Still mixing my purple and white. We're using a lot of purple and white. So if you need to mix some more, do it because we're not even close to done. We've got to do all this too. And I'm already running out of that purple and white, so I'm just mixing as I go here to make sure I have enough. You notice when I go into my spikes a little bit, I'll just use my finger to wipe it off really quick before the paint dries. 
Sometimes it's easier to take it off real quick than to try and cover it later. Okay, I'm using the toe again for the neck and the arm. I'm gonna go all the way down. There we go. Almost done. So we're gonna finish the tail right here. Get that little triangle. See, I've gotten my white, so I just take my finger and I wipe it. Easy to do. We're gonna go all the way around that tail. That's tricky, right? So if you need to use a smaller brush, that's all right for this part. Okay. The spike's looking pretty good. Just gonna make sure we have all our spots covered. And we'll just let him sit for a minute and let him dry, right? And we'll come back to him in a minute. All right, good work you guys. We're going to rinse our brush really good and work on our background while Spike dries for a minute. We've got to put our background in. So I'm going to make my background turquoise, a really light turquoise. If you want your turquoise to be darker, you can do that, no problem. Remember that as we're adding white, we control the color of our paint. So the more white I add, the lighter that background's gonna be. And the more turquoise I add, the darker it'll be. I want mine pretty light, so I'm gonna stop there. Okay, another trick that I love to do is when I'm mixing, I don't stir. I like to pat because you can see that I have some white and some blue showing up in my paint and swirls and that's what gives me white and blue streaks all over my canvas which I love. So as you are putting your paint together on your plate, try patting. See if you like it. If you want it to be more of a flat, a flat color, then you can definitely stir. But I'm, I just love streaks so I like to start on the very edge of my canvas and work my way towards spike. I'm gonna slow down, not go too fast here, right? I'm slowly working my way towards spike. And remember one of our favorite things to do at our studio is wrap our canvas. That means you're gonna paint the sides as you go, so you're gonna reach over and paint the side as you go. And you're gonna reach up and paint the top of your canvas as you go. Add a little water to your paint if you feel like it's too thick. Because sometimes as we use our acrylics, they seize up and they get a little bit thick. So we wanna make sure we're adding water to our paint as we go. So it goes on really smooth. Okay. I'm gonna show you a trick as I get closer to spike here. One of my favorite things to do. As I get closer to him, I'm gonna take my big flat brush here and put white just on the corner of it, just like that. So I've loaded that with just white. So as I get close to spike, I don't have to worry too much about getting all the way up next to him because it gives that glowy look to it and eases off the pressure. We don't have to worry so much about getting perfectly up next to him. We have that white glow and that streak in our paint. And it also helps him really stand out. So I'm gonna just carefully go around him and see what I mean about streaks. I love streaks, so I'm just gonna leave that white that white streak going around Spike. Because as I get closer to him with the white, our eyes are drawn to him. 
Now if you like it to be more of a flat background, you don't need to add the white. You can just take your time and get really close to Spike and paint all around him. We just want to make sure we slow down, right? And don't get too close that we mess up our hard work. One of the fun things though about watching a video is you can pause and go over anything that may be bothering you. So take your time and if you need to, you can fix anything on Spike that might have bothered you. But I'm gonna carefully go around him and still leave that white on mine. You see that streak there? I'm gonna leave that there. Okay, so this is the tricky part. Real tricky getting around all these little spikes, right? This is where you're gonna use the toe of your brush as you go around spikes. Spikes. <laughs> We're gonna go real carefully using that toe for around the head and his spikes. Okay. I'm sure you did awesome. That is tricky, so give yourself a high five for accomplishing it. All right. That was probably the hardest part right there. Just getting around those spikes. You did awesome. Okay, we're going to switch over to the other side now. Here we go. Doing the same thing. I added a little bit of white to the corner of my brush. I'm gonna go around Spike here. Blend those white streaks in. And just have fun with it. Let your paint land wherever it wants to. Sometimes our brush tells us what we're gonna do. It's a little different every time. And go around that nose. And see, I'm not gonna get too close to him. I'm gonna try really hard not to touch him. Okay, another fun trick is to try and make your edges a little darker than the rest of your painting. If you can do that, it draws all the attention to the center of your canvas. So sometimes I like to brush any extra paint I have on the edges of my canvas. All right, let's finish up these big spikes here. Whoops, let's wipe that off, right? Gotta slow down. Going around these spikes. Takes a little bit of time, right? Okay. Almost there. I finish up the top here. There we go. Like I said, we're just going to leave all those white streaks. Go around this canvas. Make sure you check all the edges. Don't want to leave one out. And double check and make sure sometimes we forget the top especially because we get really busy and we forget we didn't do the top and the bottom either. All right. I think we did it guys. Phew. Looks good. Good work. Okay, let's rinse our brush really good before we move on. Make sure it's super clean because we don't want to blend our colors. Okay, we're gonna do something a little tricky now. I'm gonna show you two different ways to do it, okay? The first way is you can outline your spikes here by using a detail brush. It looks like this, right? You can use this detail brush. Some of our young artists love to use this detail brush. It's a little bit easier for them. So if you have a little detail brush, I want you to get that, dip it in your water, okay? Get some of your dark green, just the green. It's not mixed with yellow and it's not mixed with white. It's just the green, okay? 
want you to take that and paint all of your outlines on spike. You have to slow down to do this, okay? But you can paint your outline all the way around your spike. So I'll just keep following it around and paint all the way around. And you can see that this looks awesome. You can do that. Or you can do something called floating, which is kind of a challenge, but I love to float. So if you can learn how to do it, I think you'll really like it. You're gonna take a large flat brush, okay? And put Spike's color back on your brush. Okay, so I'm putting my brush back in that limey green for Spike, Spike, right? And now I'm gonna put some phalo green. That's that dark green just on the corner. The very, very corner of my brush, okay? And I'm gonna float the edges and you're gonna see that my edges are a little darker, right? See that? You wanna make sure that that dark green on your brush is against the edge of your spike. Okay, you can just kind of blend that in. Okay, but this is another way to do the edges of spike. So you can go all the way around here. I'll show you again. So you have the dark green and we're gonna go around the edges of spike. Okay, and I'm gonna keep going going to keep going all the way around. So either way you choose to do it, you can outline spike or float and it's cute either way. Just a matter of preference. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to float the next one all the way around. Sometimes we have to really slow down to do these and remember to breathe because it takes some concentration, huh, to do this outlining. It's pretty tricky. So good job for trying. If you are floating with me and you're a young artist, I'm super proud of you because this is tricky. I'm going to do with this one too. We're going to outline it, right? Okay, it's gonna keep going. The goal is to have the edges of spike darker. That's the goal. Then he'll really stand out. Here's our last one here. Last one's the trickiest because it's so small. All right, we did it. I think it looks pretty good. Just make sure you have any little drips covered. Go back over it and just double check so it'll dry nice for you. Okay, let's rinse that brush. We've got to do the very same thing on his little spikes and his little spikes are even trickier, right? So I'm not going to float his little spikes. I'm going to use our friend here, this detail brush. I'm not going to use any floating on the little ones. That's super tricky. We're just going to outline his spikes here. Nice and easy, really slow. And I'm going to go all the way around, okay? All the way around in a triangle shape, right? If you don't want to round the top and you just want to do a triangle, perfectly fine. You can do that. I'm just going to follow the outline here. Go all the way up and down. All right. Okay. Now, while we're still using our green, we're going to outline the belly because it's already on our brush. So we're just going to keep going. Okay, so we need to first outline the belly and the tail and the chin. So here we go. We're going to outline our chin here. 
remember to go nice and slow. And one thing I tell my artists all the time is it's all about pressure when it comes to your detail brush. So if I use my hand here and I push really hard, I'm going to get a big line, right? If I press really soft, I get a smaller line, okay? It's all about pressure. This isn't bad and that's not bad and neither one is good. They're just different. So you just want to focus on how hard you're pushing with your brush. So as I go, I'm gonna to try to lighten my press as I go down and not press too hard, okay? But everyone's will be different and that's perfect. That's what we want, we love it when everyone's art is a little different. Okay, so I'm gonna outline his tail. Now we get to do something kind of fun. We're gonna put those that belly in and add some stripes to his belly. But as I do that, I'm not gonna do a straight line across, okay? We're gonna curve it like you're doing a rainbow, right? That's what makes his belly look round instead of flat. So as you go, try and curve your brush into more of a rainbow shape. Now oh, here's a little trick. As you're coming down his belly, I'm gonna switch the direction to make this part of his belly look bigger. And the way I do that is you're just gonna make a smiley face instead of a rainbow. See, it makes his belly look more round. And we're gonna do the same thing with his tail. So I'm gonna come over here to his tail we're gonna start putting those little rainbows in all the way down his tail. You can put as many as you want. I only have four on mine, but you can keep on going and put as many as you want on there. Okay, there we go. That looks so cute. I'm gonna rinse my brush, clean it out, right? Because we wanna make sure our brushes stay clean. Okay. Let's work on our eyeball. I'm gonna use my flat brush, okay? Make sure I have some clean white, which it's hard to find on my palette at this point, but I still have a little bit right here. So I'm gonna get some white, make sure it's clean, and make sure your brush is clean. Because whenever we use white, if our brush is dirty, it's gonna show, huh? And you see I got a little bit of purple in my eye, huh? So I wanna go back over that and make sure I get that purple out by just painting over it with white. All right, so let's put some white in our eyeball here. Just gonna cover up the purple and make sure our eyeball is nice and white and ready for our green to go in in there. the nice thing with white. If you ever get any color, we just use it to cover it right up. Just about my favorite, favorite about acrylics. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way around here, trying not to pick up my brush and get that smooth circle, right? And if you have any drips, make sure you get those out, okay? We don't want any drips going down our cute spike that we've created here. Okay, he's about to come alive. Once we add the eye, suddenly he looks real. Okay, but we're gonna let that dry for just a minute, okay? Let's let that eyeball dry for a second and rinse our brush really good. And while that eye is, is drying, I'm gonna switch back to my detail brush and we're gonna outline Spike. So remember how I saved some of my dark purple? That's what we're gonna use next. So I saved some of it for my outlining. So I'm gonna put a little bit of just dark purple on my brush that's not mixed with white. Okay, and we're gonna outline Spike here. First we want, I'm gonna go ahead and outline his tail first and let the head dry a little bit more. Okay, here we go. Let's outline this. Just wanna follow around. We have to slow down Right? But this is what really draws attention to Spike is this outlining. It really helps clean it up and finish it. And we tell our artists, you don't have to outline if you don't want to. 
it's not necessary. You don't have to do it. But if you'd like to, we're just gonna slow down and carefully go all the way around our spike. Okay. Now here's the thing. Spike here has a tail that goes around here and it comes around here, but we're gonna add a little bit of detail by adding an arm. Right here we have a neck that comes down, right? But his arm isn't here. This is super easy though. You're just gonna start here from the neck and come straight down off your canvas with your purple. Okay, and that is gonna give you an arm for Spike. We wanna make sure he has that arm. So start at the top of the head and go straight down to give Spike an arm. Okay. Now we're gonna come back up here, go around his little hump and keep going. Give him that rainbow shape all the way around. Okay, there we go. That adds a little bit of detail and character to our spike. If you need to put a another layer on there, remember we talked about how our purple is translucent? Yep, sometimes we have to go back over our purple and make sure our outline is on there right. Okay, all right, let's go do his nose. This is kind of fun. We're going to make sure his nose is outlined because we got a little put put a little bit inside his nose too. So we're gonna go all the way around. Give him a smile there. Just let your brush come up. We're gonna add a little tooth in a minute too. Okay, now inside his nose, you're gonna put a little smiley face right here. Make sure you have enough paint so it'll show up. There we go. Okay, well, let's keep going. We've got his nose on there. Now I'm going to outline his head. And this is tricky. You just have to really slow down to go all the way around that head, right? And I like to find a dry place on my canvas, canvas to place my wrist. It helps me balance a little better instead of trying to outline like this and I'm really shaky, right? You want to find a safe place to place your wrist as you go around so you can get a better line, okay? But if your canvas is wet and you place your wrist down, you'll smear something. So you want to make sure you find a dry place for it. All right, we go all the way around. Outlining his head. Is this dry? Yep. I'm dry right here so I can keep going. See how it just cleans up those edges for us? Really adds some highlighter shadow there. Okay, let's go underneath here too. Finish up as we go. You're almost done. You guys have done amazing, I'm sure. I can't wait to see it. And go all the way around. And I'm not gonna finish the circle here. I'm just gonna stop right there where his arm is. Okay. Looking good. All right. Oh, we gotta do one more thing. We gotta remember, Spike here has an eyebrow. So we're gonna come right above his head right here and just add a rainbow shape, okay? It's right here above his eye. I'm gonna come up and down, just like that. Give him a little eyebrow. Okay, let's rinse our brush. Move on to a new color. Make sure your brush is super clean. And I'm gonna use it again here, but I wanna make sure it's really clean before I do. Okay, we're going to switch to white again and paint around his ear. We're gonna outline it 
with just white. There you go. We're just going to follow that outline all the way around. Just want to follow it. And it's okay if your lines are really big here. Spikes white around his ear is really big. So I like to add a lot of white to my brush to do this and press a little bit harder to get that thicker line. Usually we don't press too hard, right? We're trying not to press hard, but when you're going around the spike here, I'm pressing harder with my brush. Okay. And I'm gonna finish up right here, all the way around. And you notice I didn't follow this white line all the way down, I left it. Kind of to make it look like it goes into his head right there. It's attached to his head right there. So I left that alone. Okay, now while we have white on our brush, let's add a little tooth right over here under his nose. Just a little triangle. You can make this tooth as big as you want. Mine's pretty small, right? It's gonna do a little triangle shape right under his nose with that detail brush. All right, now I'm gonna add some highlights. I love doing these little highlights. It really helps finish up our spike. Put one right here on his tail and one here on the triangle. You're just going to press lightly with your detail brush. And I'm going to come up here to his spikes and we're going to put rainbow shapes all the way around the top of his spikes to give it kind of that shiny look to it. Okay, so you're just going to curve your brush like you're doing a rainbow shape all the way around. I put one on all of them. We have one more right here on the top of Spike's head. You can make that as big as you want. I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, good work. I think we're about there, guys. Let's finish up his eye. We need to put some green in his eye. So if your white is dry, you can switch brushes now. I'm gonna use a smaller flat brush for this part and loosen up my bristles in my jar of water. We're gonna go back to our limey green, right? That we used on his spikes. His eyes are the same color. So I'm gonna get my limey green. And you can do any kind of eye you like. We love to see what our artists come up with. So if you want to change up your eye, you can. But I'm gonna do an oval shape right here. So I'm just gonna shape an oval. Right, all the way around here with my brush, fill it in. One tip is to start small. You can always make this shape bigger. It's just a little trickier to make it smaller, right? It's doable, but we have to paint over things. If you wanna do it in one step, start kind of small and then you can go back and make it a little bigger. So see, I want mine a little bigger now. So I'm gonna go back and widen it a little bit right there. I can do that once I know where I want the eye to go. Okay. All right. I want the bottom to probably come down a little more. So I'm going to come back down and up. And remember, the trick is to not pick up our brush as you go around. It takes lots of practice, so just do your best. All right. I'm going to come up here. Round that out. Okay. Make sure we flatten that paint. We don't want any drips, right? Flatten it out with your brush. Okay. Awesome. We're going to let that dry now for a minute. And while it's drying, I'm going to clean my brush and set it aside. And we're going to switch again to our detail brush. We're using this a lot, aren't we? Okay, so we're going to get some black on our detail brush. There we go. 
One thing to remember with black is you want it to be really loose. So add water to it. If it's too thick, it's not going to go on very smooth. Okay. So what we're going to do with our black is we're going to outline the top of our eye right here. So I'm going to take my brush and very carefully outline just the top of Spike's eye. Here we go. We're going to go all the way around, trying really hard not to pick up our brush. If we do, it's okay. It's just something to practice, right? And get that line all the way around. See, I ran out of paint right here. So I'm going to start from the bottom and come back up. Just make sure I get that outline in. This is Spike's eyelid showing up. Okay. As we come around, I'm not going to go all the way down. I'm going to stop right about there and just leave it alone. Good work. That was tricky. Okay. Now we're going to use some black to just outline a little bit of Spike's tooth here. Just a little bit so it shows up. See that? Now you can see it a little better. Okay. And then I'm going to take a little bit of black and just outline the edge of his belly here. Come down. Circle it out. Okay. Smooth that out. Have a little bit there. And here we go. We're ready for the eye. If your green is dry, we're going to put his eye in next. Now you want to make sure his eye is pretty dry. It doesn't have to be totally dry because we're using black. And whenever we use black, it's pretty much no worry because it's going to cover up everything. So let's go ahead and put our black in. First, I'm going to make a line for Spike's eye. Figure out where you want it to be. And you're just going to go straight down. Looks a little scary like that, right? So we want to round it out a little bit. So now I'm going to come back up here and just round out the corners. Keep the top as straight as you can and add kind of a sideways smiley face to your eye. See how that rounds out the shape? Okay, you want to keep the corners, the top and the bottom, straight up and down and the sides rounded kind of like a, a smiley and a frowny. And you did it. Good work. I'm going to rinse my brush really good and we have one more thing to do for spike here before we're done. First I'm going to add a little highlight to his eye. Get a little bit of white on your brush. We're going to put kind of a smiley face here. Curve it up on the side of his eye. Okay. And then I'm going to flip my brush around. We're going to use the back of it. It's one of our favorite things to do is to get that chocolate chip. Dip it in paint and our white. Get a good chocolate chip. That's a good one. That's how you know you have enough on your brush. And we're going to put a chocolate chip. Now if I just do one dot, it's pretty small, right? And I want spikes to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to circle my brush just like that and get a bigger circle. Awesome. Now be sure to wipe the back of your brush off. You don't want to stick that on your clothes or your forehead anywhere. Okay. One other little detail you can do if you want to is get some of just your dark green and go along the top of Spike's eye like this to give it that shading. That's an extra little detail if you want to do it. All right, you guys, we did it. Good work. There's one more very important thing we need to do as artists, and that is sign your name because we're proud of our work, right? We just did a really good job, and I want to make sure I sign it. That's what artists do when they are finished with their piece. So some tips with signing your name. You want to use a detail brush, something really small, okay? And make sure you choose your favorite color. 
I'm going to use black right now because I already had it on my brush. I'm going to find a little spot to sign my name. I like to find either a hidden place for my name or I like to follow where my paintings curve or fill any negative space to finish up my piece. Okay, thank you so much for painting with me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did and we hope to see you in our studio really soon. Bye.